Peter Pan in Scarlet by Geraldine McCorkran. Dramatised for radio by Nick Warburton. With Robert Glenister, Daniel Mays and Roger Allen. Mermaid! Here comes one! A rainbow! Look, John, reflections of rainbow! Tag, tag, tag! John was dreaming of Neverland again. And Peter Pan. All over London, old boys were dreaming the same kind of dreams. And what do they have in common, these dreamers? Wendy and John, Curly and Slightly, Nibs and Tootles and the twins. Be careful, John! There's something down here. They had all once been in Neverland. What is it? Oh, no, 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 no. Wendy was a grown woman now, and as sensible as can be. She had a tidy mind. She'll be the one to ask. It brushed the soles of my feet with its scaly hide, and when I woke up, it was still there. John! Lashing its tail and snapping its jaws. A crocodile! Not just a crocodile, Wendy. The crocodile. Oh, John. The worst dreams are the ones of Captain Hook. Wendy, what's happening? I imagine dreams are leaking out of Neverland. So we must find out why. How? Well, we must call the old boys together again. And that's just what they did. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen. As a judge, I suggest I chair this meeting. Thank you, Tootles. Good idea. So, what are we to do about these dreams? John Darling. Isn't it a case of mind over matter? We must just try not to dream. We, we tried, tried that. First twin, no, second, well, both twins. We stayed awake all night for a week. Then fell asleep on the omnibus going to work. And dreamed all the way to Putney. When we got off, we, we were, were wearing, wearing war paints. <laughs> Perfectly charming. Uh, the Honourable Slightly Darling, you wish to add something? Only that, Tootles, old boy. Uh, may we ask uh, Dr Curly, darling, if there's a cure? Not for an outbreak of unwanted dreams. No, well, no, 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 Thank you. I believe something is wrong in Neverland, gentlemen. Which is why we must go back. Go back? Mm -hmm. As I see it, there are three problems. First, we've all grown too big. No one but a child can fly to Neverland. <sighs> Second, we can no longer fly. Well, there you are, then. <laughs> and third... Before we can fly, we need fairy dust. Plainly impossible. Mm. Ugh, enchanting stuff, though. Fairy dust. Mm, yes. Thank you slightly, but it's not impossible. Not if we're determined and we all meet tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Where? Kensington Gardens, Curly. With butterfly nets. Oh. Of course. To look for fairies. Not fairies, slightly. Prams. Prams? Where there are prams, there will be babies. And if we can but make a baby laugh... Then, a fairy will be hatched. <coughs> and there, among banks of orange or brescia in Kensington Gardens, they found a tiny bluish mite with red hair and eyes the colour of honey. My name is Firefire and I'm hungry! He scorched the inside of John's bowler hat. But he's also left it half full of fairy dust. When they got home, Firefly devoured the rubbers off three pencils, the tassel off the bell pull, and Slightly's bow tie. Mr. Firefly, we'd like to ask if you can help us. Of course, I know everything. Everything? For a very small person, you tell extraordinarily big lies. How very kind. We need to know how to get to Neverland. We have the fairy dust now, but we're all too big. That's easy. A change of clothes is required. 
A change of clothes? When you put on your children's clothes, you become their age again. Everyone knows that. Then that's what we'll do. And so they did. Apart from Nibs. Oh, Nibs. Why not? He stood beside the bunks in the back bedroom and watched the sleeping faces of his little ones. And he simply couldn't do it. You're quite sure? Perfectly sure. He couldn't imagine going anywhere without them, ever. What did Neverland have that could possibly be better than his children? Well, I can't either, John. I'm a High Court judge. Curly's done it, Tootles, and he's a doctor. But... But... He got into his son's rugby kit. Unfortunately, the puppy grabbed the collar and wouldn't let go. So now we have a puppy coming with us. That's all very well, but well... I only have daughters. Oh, yes. And a moustache. But, Tootles, look. A lovely little smocked party dress. Oh. And ballet shoes. And they will just somehow fit. Very well. Hand them over. (sighs) But I really don't want... uh, Anything to happen to to my moustache. It's like a pet to me, you see. A precious pet. And, and, oh dear, oh dear. My word. Don't stare like that, it's rude. Tootles, is that really you? Of course it is. Who did you... Ah! What's the matter? My moustache. Oh, John, I shall so miss it. June the 6th. In the sky over Kensington Gardens, a flock of flying children gathered, like birds in autumn. Hello, boys. Good Hello. heavens, it's... Is it? Uh, it uh, is! Uh, Turtle! <laughs> oh, how sweet! A puppy! Uh, Here I am! Uh, Here I am! Oh. Hello, Wendy. Uh, well, I left notes for everyone. And my little girl was... Jane was sleeping. Well then, are we all here? Apart from Nibs. Yes, of course. Look, Wendy, I brought my clarinet. That could be jolly useful. (laughs) Let's be off then. I'm hungry. Which way is it? Oh, that's easy. Second to the right and straight on till morning. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye, Kensington Gardens. (laughs) Goodbye, London. (laughs) Goodbye, Jane. circle without a perimeter, an island without bounds, the place where children never grow up. But it's totally and completely changed. Let's get closer. The sunlight was thinner. The shadows were longer. Some rocky pinnacles had three or four shadows, all sprawling in different directions. All's not well in Neverland. Look, there's the Wendy house, and that's changed too. It's It's up up in the the air. air. No, it's balanced in the fork of a tree. The never tree. How amusing. Will it have food inside? Let's go and see. (laughs) (laughs) Hello? (laughs) Anyone about? He shut us out, after all he said. So what are we going to do? Well, you all built the Wendy house, so you have a perfect right to take it apart again. Splendid idea! Come on, chaps, let's take the end wall off. One! Oh, do be careful, boys. Two! (laughs) Have it, you nightmares! Peter! It was Peter Pan. Or was it? Yes, but different. His suit of skeleton leaves was gone, and in its place was a tunic of jay feathers and the blood-red leaves of autumn, Virginia creeper and maple. 
You may breach my castle wall, but I shall fill out the gaps with your dead bodies. Oh, oh Peter. Is that any way to greet your old friends? I have no friends who are old. Don't be so silly. You are Peter and I am Wendy. Oh. Well, you've come back then, have you? I thought I was dreaming you. You've been dreaming too. Are you quite well, Chief? If not, we can play doctors and nurses. I am dying. Oh, I knew it. Dying of boredom. <laughs> but now we can have the best adventures in the world. <laughs> and he forgot they'd ever been away. He didn't notice that Tootles had become a girl or that Slightly could play the clarinet or that Michael was missing. <laughs> oh, look! You've washed Nana and shrank her. <laughs> now, you must all swear not to do any growing up. I swear. Good. Then you're all members of the League of Pan and we shall go and do something dangerous and terrifically brave. Oh, I say, listen to that. Rain. I knew it. The forest tossed and churned and leaves spun past the windows. Whole rookeries blew out of the treetops and here were they, at the top of a tree. Everything lurched sideways. They slid down the floor and piled up in the heap. The house fell, floor over roof over window. A spinning box plunging towards the forest floor. Is everyone all right? I'm hungry. We've landed in about a million leaves. Oh, Peter, your nose is bleeding. Didn't you have a handkerchief? One you tucked in your sleeve just as you were leaving. Oh, yes. Here, Peter. Don't touch me. I mustn't be touched. Now see what you've done, all of you. What? what? Who? Who? Wish you'd never come. Oh, Peter, it was the storm. I was better on my own. I say, look at this. Someone's been pasting posters to the trees. Circus Ravello. The finest show in Neverland. Ravello? Do you think we can go? No! There might be clowns, and I hate clowns, but we will go on a quest. Yes! The quester who brings Princess Tootles, the heart of a dragon, wins her hand and a happy never after. Yes! Wendy, you stay here with Tootles. Oh. Nonsense. I shall go questing too. I've never seen a dragon. So they waded away waist deep through the fallen leaves towards all points of the compass. Tootles found a cave at the head of a beach. She stood at the entrance and looked out on the shifting, oily sheen of... The lagoon. I thought you said it was pretty. I thought it was. All turquoise water and shoals of white sand, it was. Now it was darkly heaving. A horse's flank, slick black and streaked with foam. All along the high water mark lay strange white containers, like bird cages or crab pots. Skeletons. They're rib cages, they are. Of mermaids. Oh, come on, Fireflyer. We'd better stay inside the cave. Wendy, meanwhile, found the circus tent. The air inside glowed yellow, and there was a smell of cough drops and damp sheep with. A hint of... <gasps> Ranged around the tent were twelve bears, seated on upturned tin baths. Welcome to Circus Ravel. Oh! Your devoted servant, madame. He wore a prodigious woolen garment, its sleeves reaching far beyond the finger ends. I did so hope you would come. A thousand broken strands of wool coiling and kinking. Every hem and seam of the shapeless cardigan was unravelling. Try, if you can, not to sweat. Sweat falls sharp in the nostrils of a hungry cabbage. Thank you. I, I am Miss Wendy Darling. And I am Ravello, owner of this humble establishment. Tell me, child, what is it you wish to be when you are grown up? Uh... I... Mm. I... <gasps> Tootles! 
What? She must be in danger. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I must go. No. Wait. <laughs> be still, my cabbages. Be still. Well, Princess, tell me where and I'll slay it dead. Oh, Peter, thank goodness. It's over there. I say. There in the dripping darkness, a waiting monster. An eye socket, a gaping jaw, a snaggle of teeth as long as a man's arm. Stand back, men. Bones! Bones! Nothing but bones. It's monstrous big. It's dead now. I quested it, so I win. No, we won too. We found a forest dragon and we, we killed, killed it. it. This one ain't a dragon, though. This is an alligator. No, look at this. Part of an alarm clock. You mean? It's a crocodile. In fact, it's the crocodile. The one who ate our direst foe, Captain James Hook. <gasps> Hook. The very mention of the name sent a thrilling shiver down their spines. Well, anyway, it's safe enough now, so let's have a story. Yes, a story. No, let's have a war. Mm. No, don't let's. What? Not a war. Michael wouldn't like it. I just who is Michael? Oh, Peter, how could you forget? Michael Darling went away to the big war. He was lost. Do you expect me to remember them all? There were so many. But Peter... Don't you know? No, John. He's better off not knowing. <coughs> Look out! Bears! <laughs> Stand back, everyone. I'll protect you. No need, my friend. Keep your places, cabbages. Gentlemen, ladies. I hope my little pets did not scare you. Fear is a stranger to me. Two strangers met in one day, then, Peter Pan. Fear and myself. You know my name. Who hasn't heard of the marvellous boy? You are the stuff of legend. I am. I am. <laughs> I must caution against loud noises. My cabbages might run amok. Ah, we meet once more, Miss Wendy. Hello? Your servant, ma'am. I thought perhaps you might need warm beds and a feeling supper. We don't go about with grown-up people. But you will at least come to the circus, won't you? Yes. No! No? Oh, oh, Curly, oh. look out! He let go! Let go of my coat! Oh, I'll see you've got yourself all tangled in... Dear, all this wool! You show a great concern for animals, young man. Curly, is it? Do you see yourself as a veterinary man? Perhaps one day when you are older. Gently, my furry furies, it's only a nip. I see we are not wanted here. We'll go. Come, cabbages. Come away. Who are you? Just a traveling man, a simple traveling man. Good night, gentlemen, ladies. Oh, oh, oh. Let him go. We don't need grown-ups. We're all right as we are. Strange chap, that traveling man. Or was it raveling man, John? Because he was extremely woolly. I don't care. Animals in cages? I hate to think of it. And a terrible foreboding settled over his heart, which he did not understand. And not understanding always gives Peter a pain. Does anyone smell smoke? Yes. I hear flames. Mm. Out in the forest. Twins? Yes. When you said you killed the forest dragon, how did you do it? With fire. Why? Oh. 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 The Neverwood. It's on fire. And we're trapped between the burning forest and the poisoned lagoon. Oh, boys, boys, what are we going to do? They all turned to face the lagoon, and there was the most startling sight of all. Sail ho! It's a ship! A ship coming toward us! Through the moiling yellow smoke came the bowsprit of a ship, shouldering aside the oil-black waves. Black sails, and the skull and crossbones at the masthead. Oh dear, I don't think it's going to... Stop. I know this ship. It's his ship. Hooks. 
The Jolly Roger. Come on then, I say. And off he went onto the Jolly Roger, climbing up by way of the gun ports. The beached ship was silent, shrouded in a choking murk. Brings it all back, doesn't it? Not to me, it doesn't. The very deck where Peter and Hook fought to the death. Deserted for 20 years. A ghostly ship adrift on a ghastly well, ocean. Damp and dank and dead. Then... Freddy! Come and look at this! Look. It's his old sea chest. Oh, yes. J.H. I'm going to open it. Oh, be careful. <gasps> look at this! A brass telescope and instruments and... His coat. His scarlet frock coat. His second best coat. The best one slivered down the crocodile's throat. Help me put it on. So Wendy helped him into the red coat. Oh, yes! Captain Peter Pan of the Jolly Peter. <laughs> oh, look at me! cock a doodle -doo! Hello? What's this? What? In the pocket. Crumply old paper. It's a map. A treasure map. With forests and hills, lighthouses and mountains. And there, sure enough, a big black X was gouged through the highest mountain of all. Never peak. This is it, Wendy. A voyage of discovery. A treasure hunt. Is that why they'd been called to Neverland? Yes, yes, yes! Just then, the tide came in much faster than it does on unremarkable days. It refloated the ship and spun her round so that her bowsprit pointed out to sea. Unfurl the mizzen staysail! You there! Fall on that halyard! They left the Bay of Dragons behind them and sailed into the night. At midnight, the ship's bell rang eight times and no one was anywhere near it. Listen to me, mates. I'll stick by you forever and lay down my life for you if you'll join my company of explorers. Yes! Sometimes the ferocity of his orders took them by surprise. Take down that skull and crossbones. I will not sail under a pirate flag, you scurvy build rat That's but... quite enough of that, thank you. Make me a new flag, girl. What's the little word that gets things done? I don't know. Button, thimble, flag. <laughs> Wendy smiled and went to make a flag out of her sundress a dress out of the pirate flag. So it was under the emblem of Sunflower and Two Rabbits that the Jolly Peter sailed into the Sea of One Thousand Islands. Peter spent hours in Hook's stateroom, poring over the treasure map. Why never peek? And what booty is he stashed away there? And sometimes, when he closed his eyes, he saw strange views and vistas, wide green lawns, Rowers on a sunlit river. A cream-coloured building with tall, narrow, stained-glass windows. No such place. Where do these pictures come from? A steam cutter, steel grey, caked in rust like dried blood, was coming straight for them. It can't have seen us! Oh, I think it has, Tootles. Oh, but it's oh, going full speed ahead. That's what they want. They want to ram us. Oh, 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 look at Dive to port. Do what? Stand that way, you lovers. Oh, Spin the wheel, John Darling. Oh. On and on came the steamer. So close now that the children could see its crew getting ready to board. They're tiny. About waste time. Oh. And wearing war paint. Look out! Oh. Oh. Pushing us out to sea. We'll be shoved off the edge. Watch out! Coming aboard! Oh. Oh. Starkey. Who? Hook's first mate. And he's got his redskins with him. Oh. 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 Now then, buggles, you just lie face down on the deck. Or we'll have to slip your gizzards and feed you to the fishes. Starkey! Swipe me naked. What's the matter, Starkey? Seen a ghost? Well, if it ain't the cockadoodle, who else? 
time to meet my little throat slitters, I think. Bundle them up, my braves! <laughs> they shoved the darlings into the smelly old pirate kit bags and pulled the cords up tight round their necks. But not one of them dared to lay a hand on Peter Pan. I can get me a good price for slaves. Curse you, Starkey. You'll pay for this. <laughs> All this while, the steam cutter continued to puff and chug along, pushing the jolly Peter ahead of it like a tea trolley. Now then, Pan, turn out your pockets. Never turn out your pockets, cockadoodle, or I'll have you shot full of arrows. No! On the count of three. One. Just then, five small islands appeared to port. Two! and, most unusually for islands, seemed to be gaining on them, riding the waves, travelling against the current. I say, look at that! What? Floating islands! Floating islands? Not just floating, they're coming alongside. What the? Grappling irons! We're being boarded! <laughs> boarded? Boarded by islands? It's those bears again! Bears flopping big furry bellies over the rail. Starkey's sprogs dropped their bows and leapt back onto the steamer. Come back, you little lovers! Last to board from the floating islands was a solitary two-legged creature. Experiencing difficulties, sir. Ravello! What good fortune that he should have been passing. Wasn't it? Peter drew his dagger and released the League of Pan from their kit bags. Don't mind my nippers and snappers. They rarely eat between meals. Thank you, Mr. Ravello. You saved us. Pleasure, ma'am. I was very much hoping our paths would cross again. Why? There was a fire in the Neverwood. Did you know? My circus was utterly destroyed by that fire. Oh, dear. So I seek employment. One must work, don't you think? Works for grown-ups. I thought I might be allowed to serve in some humble way the marvellous Peter Pan. Maybe. Now so handsomely garbed in red. Your valet, perhaps, your serving man. Well, Ravello, we are going exploring, you know. It may get dangerous. We're heading for the Maze of Regrets, the Thirsty Desert and the Unknown Territory, where courage is everything. Courage, sir. You stole the very words from my heart. Then you're my valet, Ravello. Are you sure about this? And you can stow your gab, you blackguard. Steady on, Peter. Why should I steady on? You're the scum of the sea. There's a lot of you. Oh, Peter, where did that all come from? Never mind where. May I suggest we cut the steamer adrift and continue on our way? No, I want to keep it. We'll tow it behind us at the end of a steel chain. Now to your posts. We sail on. The ravelling man made himself wonderfully useful around the ship, cooking meals, reading the weather, polishing the brass. He seemed never to sleep at all, night or day. I wonder if Sir would like me to comb his hair again. To Peter Pan, he was most attentive of all. How long and lustrous it's becoming, Sir. I know that, Ravello. Every day it grows slightly longer, slightly darker. Long and lustrous, sir. It goes much better with a coat, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, beg your pardon, sir. What, Curly? It's the steamer, Captain. It's overtaking us. Don't talk bilge. How can it? We're towing it. We were. Now it's towing us. Oh, dear. Sounds like lodestone rock to me. Lodestone rock? A pinnacle of red rock like a church steeple. It's magnetic. Perhaps we should go on deck, sir. We're being dragged nearer and nearer. What are we going to do? Cut the chain to the steamer. How will that help? Because the steamer's metal and we're wood, you fool. Magnetism can't get us if we're wood. What's that? The nails. Oh, oh. Being drawn out of the deck. Oh, they're popping out all over the place. Every rib and every plank. Oh, we're, we're coming apart. Oh, then we have no choice. We must fly. The hull peeled itself off like an orange. Fly, everyone! Fly! Mr. Ravello! Sorry, miss! Can't fly! He was a full-grown man, or a very tall cardigan, so he was left behind. 
Wendy looked down and saw his wool-clad form fling itself across a sea chest that came bobbing to the surface. Hang on! They sat down on a line of rocks that stretched out from the land like a witch's finger. I say, these aren't actually rocks. No, they're not. They look like... Yes, they do. Prams and baby baby carriages. carriages. So they are. All wrecked and rusty. But not a soul in sight. Welcome (gasps) to Grief Reef, miss. Ah, Ravello. There you are. Fortunately, sir, yes. Oh, thank goodness. I managed to cling on. Yeah, what are all these prams doing here? These are the prams once pushed in parks by nursery maids. Don't mean... That boys tumbled out of never to be seen again. These are the prams that turned baby boys into lost boys. But how did they fetch up here? The nursemaids rebuilt them into little boats, and they rowed out to sea, determined to search the world until they found those babies. Oh, how sweet. And did they ever find any of the lost boys, Mr. Ravello? We must hope not, miss. Hope not? Indeed, we must, Master Slightly. These ladies were sacked because of those missing infants. So they were, they are, bent on revenge. Oh, Oh dear. Then let's get away from here. We're bound for Never Peak, remember? All the way. We're going all the way. All the way we're going. We're going all the way. And if you don't believe us, the ground became drier with every mile they walked. Soon there was nothing but dust, studded with bristly cactus plants and strung with trip wires of briar and bramble. Wendy began to notice. What is it? Rags of cloth caught on the thorns. It looks like lace from the hem of a petticoat. What was it doing here? The middle of nowhere. What was that? It it came from over there. A wilderness of rippling sandstone, hollowed out by wind or rain into a honeycomb of corridors and passageways. A maze. And there are people wandering about. Oh, a person could wander about here and never find anything but another corridor to climb. Women! Down! Get down, quick! In among the gullies of rock, countless women scurried up and down, calling and calling. They're witches! Witches? But where are their pointy hats? His lordship is correct, I fear. This is the maze of witches. On no account let them see you. These are the women I told you of. The nursery maids! Precisely. If they see a child, any child, Wash it, (gasps) change its socks, and feed it semolina. Like as not, they will probably even kiss it. (gasps) Then they'll roast and eat it. (gasps) What? They could all see the women's anxious hands clutching handkerchiefs or small toys or corners of blanket. This place was called something different on the map, I thought. The maze of something else. No, it's the maze of witches. It must be. Listen to it, it's horrible. Right, on your bellies, company. I beg your pardon? We have to get past. On your bellies and crawl, the lot of you. Worming along on their stomachs, grazing knees and wrists, the explorers inched forward. Within minutes, they were hopelessly lost. Now which way? That way. No, that way. We've been that way, Captain. Then that way. Uh, I don't like this place. It's sad. Pull yourself together slightly. It's full of sadness. And look where you're going. But blinded by tears, Slightly ran straight into a witch. Florizel? Is it you? Flory? Flory? Run! Up and run while you can! Slightly! Flory! She held Slightly's face between her hands. There was a maze, too, 
in the green iris of her eyes. Oh dear. Oh dear. Then dozens of witches came jostling to see. Oh dear me. They flapped towards him in a shrieking mob and slightly, slightly took out his clarinet and started to play. Like Horatius holding the bridge, slightly played while his friends fled to safety. When all the women's eyes were shut in an ecstasy of sorrow. Now, slightly! Run! Excuse me, I'm sorry. Stop it, where is he going? Oh, slightly, you were wonderful. In. Indeed, you are to be congratulated, young sir, on your musical genius. Well, I, I don't know. They seemed more sad than angry. I suppose that's what you wish to be, is it, when you're grown up, a musician? M me? Indeed, sir, do you? Oh, yes. I'd love to be one of those when I grow up. <sighs> then who can prevent it? On they marched, steadily nearing the mountain, until they had to shelter from driving rains. I wonder what the treasure will actually be. Gold doubloons. And pieces of eight. Ravello was running the comb slowly through Peter's hair, <coughs> curling the glossy locks around a pencil. What would you wish for, Mr Ravello? I cannot wish, miss. Surely you can. No. No more than I can dream to do either a man needs sleep. And I do not sleep. You see. Oh. Oh, I, I think it's easy. Oh, oh, sorry, By Kraken and Krakatoa. Mind where you put your great feet. Oh, I, I say I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I've a mind to brand you here and now. Oh, Peter. <coughs> I hardly recognise you when you say things like that. I don't think you're at all well. Then perhaps we should eat. There are, I believe, ship's biscuits in the chest. But they turned out books and sea boots, a sou'wester and a life jacket, charts and compasses, but... No biscuits. Fireflyer! What? What have you done? I was hungry. Then that does it! Oh, Peter, no! Oh. And Peter drew a window in the air with his sword, a casement complete with sill and latch. Go on! Out you go! Shoot! Ow, ow. I shut you ow. out, pest, for taking more than your fair share. Oh, oh Peter. Fairies die if they ignore them, you know. Ignore him. He's banished. Now get yourselves ready. We're moving on. <laughs> One for you. They walked on One till they you. came to a dense, dark grove of piney trees. Yep. And there they stopped <coughs> to rest for the night. Two for the twins. One for... Peter? Look. Berries! <laughs> Fair shares. Where did you... I flew about by moonlight. I followed the owls and I shadowed the bats. There was still something of the moonlight in his face. A silvery pallor. Moon tan. Oh, the cleverness of pan. <coughs> <coughs> mm -hmm. Look, shipmates, look. Mm -hmm. See here. Ooh. Grub. Oh, I say. <laughs> <laughs> I think we may say that His Excellency has saved the day. Thank you, Ravello. Oh, but, sir, the chill of the morning and you're not wearing your coat. Let me help you put it on again. These, these aren't bad. Where did you get them from? Oh, high among the upper branches. Mm. Look, mm. there's still some up here. Stop! Mm? Carve the name out of that boy and cast him adrift. Well, now what have I done? Curl him for a traitor and a turncoat. Send him to nowhere land. He only picked some berries. Look at him. 
Don't you see? Breaker of oaths. Big, long snake in the grass. He reached the berries no one else could reach. He's grown up! Oh, please, Captain, no! With his sword point, Peter drew a portcullis in the air, complete with rope and wheel and cruel iron spikes. And he drove slightly backwards through it on the end of his sword and... Don't grow up. That's the only rule and slightly broke it. Now get up and move on. Move! Come on! Oh, slightly. Wendy, are you with us? Pine forests gave way to a landscape of naked sticks, as leafless and lifeless as ships' masts on a sandbank. The thirsty desert. No lakes or rivers to drink from. Peter went ahead to scout for a spring or a brook. Oh, poor Slightly. Whatever will become of him? He will doubtless become one of the Roarers, miss, and run wild and wayward. Who are the Roarers? The long boys. The long lost boys. Boys, culled by Peter Pan because they grew up. They roam the wild places, living by banditry and mayhem, cruel through and through. No one is all bad. I'm sure Slightly could never do such things. You don't think so, miss? Put out of doors like an empty milk bottle by his very best friend? The Roarers wisely learn never again to love. That's not fair. Such is the law of Pan. Peter's coming back! Waterfall! I found a waterfall! Come on and see! Meanwhile, Slightly was in nowhere land. We hate him, don't we? As was Firefly, of course. The League of Pan, we hate him! Oh, I don't think so. He'd never quite got the hang of hating people. So he told Firefly stories of the old days, of Peter and Tinkerbell, and, of course, of Captain Hook. A villain and a blackguard and a do-no-good sticky ender. I suppose so. He shouted at his men and threatened them and swaggered and blustered. Just like Peter. What? I didn't say anything. But Slightly saw that it was true. Peter Pan had begun to behave exactly like Captain Hook. Which is rather worrying because... Gosh! Oh! Two dozen hulking boys brandishing clubs. Let's spit him and roast him and eat him. Waterfall, waterfall! Icy cold! Taste it! It's delicious! It was complete in itself. No river flowing up to the brink, no river flowing away. Simply a cascade of water cloaking a wall of rock. As smooth as glass. I'm drinking the spray. It's delicious. What is a sort of cloud hanging over it? A cloud of flittering, glittering colour. A kaleidoscope of shifting lilac, blue, mauve and purple. But surely not the waterfall. No! They're fairies! Thousands of fairies! (laughs) Thousands. Soon the explorers were floundering in drifts of fairies, unable to take one step. Peter! What's the matter with them? I don't know. Get off! Get off! One by one the children fell, and one by one they were smothered under a carpet of fairy ambushes. What do you want? Are you red or are you blue? Answer now and answer true. Are you red or are you blue? I'm afraid, sir. We have walked into the middle of a fully-fledged war. Red or blue? What do you mean? Are you blue or are you red? Answer wrong and you are dead. Dead? Peter, they're going to kill us. We're not on any side. We're explorers. You never used to fight. What are you thinking of? I suggest we choose red or blue. And if we guess wrong... Yes, 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 yes! But I don't know! Here! 
rainbow! And Peter reached into the waterfall and brought out a rainbow formed by sun and spray. Uh, here's our banner! Now, judge us by our flag, sprites, and kill us or free us! Rainbow! Rainbow! <laughs> the fairy army was thrown into confusion. They looked at the banner and saw both blue and red in equal proportions. <laughs> Fairies always fall upwards. Go! Go and leave us in peace! Gone! I thought we were done for! Oh, them and their stupid flags. Fall in, me hearties. Who's for Never Peak and a chest full of treasure? Hooray for the Rainbow Banner! Yay! You're in the league, ain't you? One of his. No, we're not. We hate him. Pan turned us out, and we're going to get him for it. Where is he? Say or die. Gone up the mountain. To fetch us our treasure. We made him go. <laughs> made him, did ya? I like the sound of that. Maybe you two ain't so bad after all. <laughs> What do the reds and blues fight about? <laughs> Their favourite colour, of course. Which is best? Why? They never used to. Perhaps the fairies left open the night windows of Neverland, miss. And in came war. Then they came across the scene of a fairy battle. The ground was scattered with 10,000 ragged wings. The cobwebs clogged with fairy dust. Fat black crows hopped about, glossy and villainous. Oh, the poor, silly things. They stopped for the night on the slopes of Never Peak. No food to be had, except for the berries they'd picked earlier. And they brought on dreams. Peter dreamed of the treasure, rowing towards it over sunlit water, round a river bend, and then a grand staircase. And he was so happy, and so afraid, and hopeful. Yes, they all dreamed. Except Ravello. I didn't sleep. <coughs> Ravello, hand me my coat. It's here, sir, waiting. There we are. That's better. We're so close now. Couldn't you fly to the top, Peter? What? And fetch back the treasure. Idle, mutinous mole. Lily-livered scupper rats, all of you. You're a waste of rations. What rations? What did you say? Nothing. Peter, they're just tired. Oh, yes. Turn them against me. Girls, what are they good for but growing into mothers? And everybody knows what mothers are. <laughs> I'm getting hot. Take the coat off, Ravello. I really think you should... I'm taking it off. There. Do what you like with it. I'm not staying here with you lot. Now what? Well, gentlemen, I shall follow. If you mean to come too, I would advise haste. There are roarers around. Oh, yes, we want Pan because he poisoned us. Poisoned everywhere. Oh, I, I don't think he... He did. Pour poison into the lagoon. All Neverland changed after that. Poisoned us too when we weren't looking huh? and made us grow. Who, who told you all this? Some traveller. Travelling man. Travelling man? Ravello. Look, sorry, I must go. I must go up the mountain. Ah, you'll be lucky. No one's ever climbed that mountain and leave. Oh, my God. On the mountain, the explorers dragged themselves onto a narrow ledge of rock and found Peter waiting for them. Greetings, explorers. Oh, Peter. oh come on. We're well on our way. Are we, Peter? Well on our way? We came here to be explorers. What did we think? That it would be easy? We're not like you, Peter. Some of us get tired and scared. <coughs> not everyone can be rich. Not everyone can be strong or clever. Not everyone can be beautiful. But we can all be brave. Courage is just there for the taking. Well, don't you think so, people? Aren't I right? Courage is the thing. All goes if courage goes. Yay! 
And perhaps you'd climb better without your shadows. Yay! I can cut them for you and put them in my chest for safekeeping. <coughs> All right, puppy, it won't hurt. Let go of my coat, dog. Let go of Mr. Ravello. You hurt. <laughs> You have the smallest desire ever to grow up and be a dog. <laughs> Precisely. Your scarlet coat, sir, the color of bravery, it will encourage the others. Oh, all right. And... No! Uh, you don't cut my shadow. That I keep. <clears throat> Without their shadows, the explorers felt light of heart and happy. Even when the snow began. She'll be at the top at this rate. And Hook's treasure will be ours. Do you remember? Mother used to call us her dearest treasure. Shh. Peter hates talk about mothers. You know, he flew home once from Neverland and the bedroom window was shut. He, he's never forgiven his mother. He's right. After all, what's a mother good for but to blight a chap's life? Oh, no, Mr. Ravello. Yes, she may look very well sipping champagne on the headmaster's lawn, but when she laughs at the news a boy's failed his colours, or when at June's speeches a lad looks out and finds no mother there, uh, worlds have been lost by the heartlessness of mothers. Whole worlds! Are you... Are you by any chance a lost boy, sir? Certainly not. By no means, miss. Ravello! Ravello! Yes, sir. Easier without my shadow, did you say? Peter, you look exhausted. Far easier. At this altitude, sir, shadows double their weight. Do it then. Be rid of it. It weighs me down and I never liked it. In one lithe movement, Ravello sliced away Peter's shadow, then folded it neatly in four places and laid it delicately in the sea chest. Has anyone seen Puppy? I called him, but... Oh, Curly. He'll be waiting for us at the bottom, I expect. I'm sure he'll be fine. Will he? Eventually, they came to a yawning ravine where the ice shrank to a thin beam like a bridge of cheap, crazed glass and so slippery that they got down on their hands and knees to crawl across it. Oh! Steady! Steady! So thin that they could see right through to certain death below. Peter, don't get up! Whoa. Whoa. I, I can walk this. Courage is the thing, Wendy. All goes if courage goes. Whoa. Whoa. What's happened? He's staring down at the ice. Are you all right, sir? Peter! What is this? A face! I can see a face! Look out! Oh! He's fallen! Help! Hold on, sir! Peter. I'm coming! Help me, Ravello! Uh, uh, now! Grab my arm, boy! Quickly! Grab hold! I saw him! I saw a hook! Take hold of my arm, sir! Uh, yeah. uh. It cost Ravello a titanic effort to pull Peter to safety and into the circle of his arms. Peter's fingers sank deep in the woolly hide. There, sir. There. Safe. Don't touch me. I mustn't be touched. Are you all right? I saw him. Hook's face. His memory, perhaps. His likeness printed on the air. No. I saw my reflection in the ice and it was... Yes, sir. Never mind. You're all right now. And I couldn't fly, Ravello. What's happening? Think of the treasure, sir. You know what it is you so assiduously seek, do you not? Yes. Yes, I do now. The things you wish for. I see them. And they're so shiny and fine. And I've wanted them for so long. <sighs> of course you have. Then bear up, sir. We're close to the top. So very close. In Neverland, a treasure chest contains the treasure seeker's dearest wish. The thing he or she wants more than anything else in the world. We'll help you to look. No. This is my place. <coughs> Stay back. Indeed, sir. Quite correct. Peter dug with a piece of slate, shoveling up snow until he was white-haired from his own digging. 
cold. Where is it? Where? Ah, warmer. Hotter. Yes. Hot. Avast! Quickly, Peter, open it. <laughs> twigs. Dry grass and twigs. We wish for that. So we can build a fire. It's, it's so, so cold. cold. Where is it? There was fairy dust to fly them home again, and cold spaghetti and sago pudding and... Tinkerbell! In a corner of the lid, cocooned in gossamer, a lovely lissom fairy, no bigger than a child's hand. <laughs> How can a person sleep in such a draught? <sighs> Peter? Is that you? Peter Pan? But Peter took no notice and continued to rummage in the treasure chest. Fairies die if you ignore them, you know. Out of my way. He must be here somewhere. Oh, no. Not Peter Pan. I thought it was, but it's not he. It is the other one. And she went back to sleep. Then Peter cast aside a storybook and some Indian silk and... Yes! There lay the real treasure. The one for which they had risked everything. A cup, a trophy, a statuette. He clutched them lovingly to his chest. Oh, at last! Silver cups! Oh, it's what I dreamed of! But school trophies, Peter, why? Shiny, shiny. No, not again. What? The face. It's your reflection. The same face. I'm not myself. Wendy, I am not me. But you've not been yourself for the past ten leagues. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Can't you see? He's become Hook. <gasps> Captain Jazz Hook. Scourge of Neverland. No! And here is the proof. Behold, Hook's treasure. And only Hook could find it. You see how I groomed you, boy, to wish the right wishes? What a service you did me, Pan, the day you put on my second best jacket. Yours? You mean... Your hook! Once, but no longer. Look to yourself if you would see Hook. No, I am Peter Pan. You wear the red jacket. Your hair falls in coils. You dream Hook's dreams. I couldn't wish I needed you. I'm Pan. I shall always be young and there is no one like me. <coughs> and I can take the coat off. Too late. Your summer is ended and winter is come. And the rest of you... Without shadows, you can't fly. And I have them here, neatly rolled up like window blinds. You see? There they go! No! Six silhouettes went dancing out over the abyss, tumbling and colliding and rolling themselves into a single grubby ball. Hook, you villain. Only the devil steals a man's shadow. They'll regrow if you live long enough. Shadows grow back with sadness. Why are you doing this? Because I longed to see my name on the sporting cups of Eton College. I would have done too, but she came to fetch me away. Your mother, you mean? I, on sports day, I had no chance to compete for prizes which would have been mine, so I emptied the trophy cabinet and took every last prize away with me. You stole your school cups. <laughs> then I came to Neverland, the one place where a boy can shape his own destiny. I left my treasure here on Never Peak. And has it made you happy, your treasure? How would I know? Happiness is not a food I've tasted before. But now I have my treasure back. I would have had it sooner, <laughs> but for Pan, that weevil in the meat. Who consigned you to the belly of a crocodile? Oh, yes, but I refuse to take deadness. Each day, the stomach acid burned me and the stench choked me. I thought on nothing but revenge. <coughs> then, 
the bottle of poison I kept in my breast pocket cracked and loosed its venom into the crocodile. And into the lagoon? <coughs> it was you who poisoned Neverland. I cut my way out of the dead crocodile with my hook. But all that emerged was this thing like a sponge, a thing like a dead thing. Ravello, the raveling man. I wanted to recover my treasure, but I could not wish. I couldn't do it. No more than I could sleep. So you got someone to wish for you? The only one whose willpower equaled that of James Hook. You should be grateful, Pan. <laughs> I turned you from a mere child into the greatest pirate of them all. You, Hook, will always be my sworn enemy. <laughs> What would you have been, I wonder, if you had grown to manhood? A pirate like me? Never! Or an actor? Or, of course, an explorer? Is that it? What? What? Don't you answer him! Slightly! Don't you answer him, Peter! He asked me the self-same thing, and that's when I started to grow. I've worked it out, you raveling man. The moment a child answers that question, he's halfway to being an adult. Yes, you. One moment more and I would have stolen childhood away from the boy Pan. He told the Roarers that you made them grow older, Peter, but he poisoned them. I should carve you to the bone, villain. You'd find nothing there but my hatred of thee, Peter Pan. <coughs> you're, you're not well, Peter. We need to make a fire. We've got dry grass. And twigs. But, but no, no match. match. Mr. Ravello, do you have a match? Surely we can get the fire lit and talk after. <laughs> What's the little word that gets things done? Well... Please. 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 A match, then, is it? Only one left. Tell me again. What's the little word? Please. <laughs> Wrong. It's die. No! <laughs> <laughs> We must fight, you and I. I have no need to kill you, Cockadoodle. That task I'll leave to Neverland. Coward! <laughs> <laughs> now what are we to do? We'll freeze! Out of the way! Out of the way! Firefly! Is she here? Has it worked? Who? What? Tinkerbell. She's my treasure. I wish for her. So cold. Too cold. Ah, she's beautiful. Got to go now. It was love at first sight, and Tinkerbell needed warmth, so Firefly plunged like a drop of molten gold into the pile of twigs. And his body heat lit the bonfire. We have fire! Much good may it do you! It did. Glaciers cracked, and the snow couldn't keep its grip. Waterfalls unfroze with a splashing rush and startled flowers into opening. The blizzard blew away, out across the sea. <coughs> Are you all right, Captain? Keep off! <coughs> Don't come near me! Fight me, Hook! Fight! <coughs> Peter! This is your doing, Ravello! You blackguard! You've killed him, haven't you? Shh, shh! I'm listening for a heartbeat. Oh, oh Peter, it's dead! <coughs> A quiver went through Neverland then, that made the horizon buckle and the reflections climb out of every pool and lake and lagoon. Ridiculous. He's not yet dead. Listen. I needed the brat. Why should I harm him, you fools? But he is harmed. He's not stirring. I don't need him any more. Then you can go away! You're banished! Go yourselves! I was here first. This isn't helping. Peter needs a doctor. Ask me, Ravello. What? Ask me a question. N no, Curly, don't. Ask me what I want to be when I grow up. Think <sighs> of what you're doing. Let me go, Slightly. You want to become a roarer? He's right. Do you really think Pan will thank you? He'll turn you out as he turned out all the rest. Ask me. Ah, well, who am I to dissuade you from your chosen fate? So tell me, Master Curly... What do you want to be when you... A doctor. I want to be a doctor. Curly, be careful! Oh, too late, he's growing. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. 
And there before them stood Dr Curly Darling GP MRCS. Now then, let's take a look at this young man, shall we? Hearts fluttering a little. The sound of eternal youth dying. 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 A small incision, I think, just here. Sugar tongs, please, Nurse Tootles. Thank you. Ah, here we are. I think this may be the source of the trouble. What is it? I'd say it was a strand of fog. London fog, in fact. Oh, brought back from Cadogan Square. From my handkerchief. Very likely, yes. I might have killed him. A strand of fog? That's all? He should be fine now. Come on, Slightly. We should go, I think. Of course, old boy. Where are you going? I know the rules. I grew up, so I have to go. And cutting his own door in the air, he stepped through it and into banishment. Good riddance. (gasps) Peter? Hello? Are you all right? I feel... I feel... What? Myself again! Down they all went. Down the mountain, down the monkey puzzle trees, leaving Ravello to trail after them with his trophies. And as they went, Wendy began to remember... Cadogan Square. And a little girl called... Jane. Come on, Wendy! Keep up! You swore to keep the rule. But why did you grow bigger if you didn't want to be banished? We was poisoned, innit? it? By a dirty double dealing twister of a chief. No, he's not! And he didn't! <laughs> Peter didn't betray you! There's the man who betrayed you! <laughs> oh, they've got you now, cock and doodle! He's the one who made you grow! <laughs> Look at you. You could have stayed young forever, but Hook kept a bottle in his pocket and it leaked poison. And poisoned the lagoon, and he turned my lost boys into roarers. So I did. Oh, dear. Nah, that's the circus man. Well, he's Hook as well. And he asked you his question, didn't he? What do you want to be when you grow up? That was him. Hook. It was. Hook's done this. He has. I have. Hook. Precisely. Hook. 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 Don't. Clown at me like that, you skunk. Why? What's she gonna do about it? You'll see. Up, my cupboard. Up, up. What's that? Why don't you wait to find out? It's bears. I know it. Run, lads! Run! The roarers scattered, each man for himself. Some of the bears gave chase, others turned to the children. Jolly well done. Call them off, Hook. Oh, and why should I do that? Because... Oh, look, Wendy. Look up there. It's behind me, no doubt. What do you take me for? No, it's above you, Hook. The fairy army. What? Out of the sky fell a confetti of fairies. A crateful, a cartload, a torrent of fairies. But why? Why did they descend at just that moment? Because they were the blue army. And we had Hook's scarlet frock coat. Of course, the red coat. Here! Here! Over here! Red! 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 Stop that! Stop it! Get back, everyone! Here they come! No, no! Keep them away! Keep off my stairs! Claws and teeth were useless against such an onslaught. Please, Pam! They're afraid, they're suffocating. Help me free them. And have them eat us? Are you mad? There's no malice in them. Hush, cupboards. I'm coming. What's the little word that gets things done? What? What's the little word? Pity! Give me the rainbow banner, Peter. What? Why? 
because the banner gave the fairies something new to fight about. All the colours of the rainbow. Here! A new banner, fairies! The prettiest in Neverland! Dazzled and distracted, the fairies allow themselves to fall skywards, taking the banner with them, dividing up its rainbow colours between them. They're going! My poor, poor cabbages. They can do us no harm now, Hook. You didn't care. Be careful with that hook. Now, now I will fight you, Pan. I'm ready, Hook. By this hook, I'll have your skin. I have no sword, pirate. Oh, then I have the advantage. Oh. Have it thee, I say. He's got a hook and a dagger. That's not fair. Again. Oh. Peter, uh. mind the tree. Uh, uh, uh. He's caught. He's uh. snagged. Not fair, no fair. Caught on a branch. Let him go. Let me down. Please, Mr. Ravello, Peter can't move. Uh. So he can't. Fruit ripe for the picking. Let me fight fair and square. Oh, dear, Cockadoodle, quite, quite powerless. Uh. Who's left to save you now? Uh. What? It's Puppy. Puppy's come back. And look at the size of him. Oh. Oh. Get it off me. Get it now. <laughs> Poor Ravello. Poor. He asked for it. He's scarcely breathing, Peter. He lost. That's all. Thanks to Puppy's intervention. But how did Puppy come to be so big? Half as high as a horse. He's a Newfoundland. He just grew up. And he tangled in Ravello's fleece, didn't he? Poor Ravello. Hook. Remember, he's Hook. Hook lay like a hank of dead mermaid's hair. Tootles might have liked to practice bandaging. Or make a sling or something. But she didn't have the courage to go anywhere near the unraveled man. But Wendy... Poor man. Wendy went to him alone. Are you dying, Mr. Ravello? I fear, lady, that I am undone. Yes. I thank you for rescuing my animals. It was a little bit our fault they got squashed. Here, I've bought you your trophies. Thank you. I thought you might like to have them with you. She stacked the trophies and cups in a shining silver pyramid where he could see them as he died. Some of them got rather bent, I'm afraid. Their worth is not in their condition, madam. You know... I may return them if ever I am invited back to address the school on speech day. That would be a very interesting speech day, Mr. Ravello. Hook. My name is Hook, Madam Captain James Hook. Sleep is a great healer, you know. I haven't slept for twenty years, not since the crocodile... I expect that's because you haven't had anyone to kiss you goodnight. Not since the crocodile, anyway. Madam, I have never had anyone kiss me goodnight. Mine was not that breed of mother. In any case, it would be namby-pamby and sentimental and... and not quite manly. But worth a try. But... Worth a try. So even though he was the bloodthirstiest pirate on all the seven oceans and hated her friend Peter Pan more than death itself, Wendy bent and kissed Hook on the cheek. Covered him over with the red frock coat. Good night, James. Sweet dreams. Then she left him alone knowing that death would be along shortly to cradle him in gentle and forgiving arms. What are you doing? Why? What's the matter? He's the enemy. If you're nice to my enemies, you must be my enemy too. Oh, Peter, no! Wendy, darling, I banish you to nowhere land for giving succour to the enemy. You can't. Not to Wendy. Bosh and tosh. Wendy! (gasps) 
Sometimes, Peter, you are such a ninny. Come on, everyone. By the next day, Peter Pan had forgotten all about the quarrel. He was always good at forgetting things he did not want to remember. Meanwhile, Slightly and Curly. I'm not exactly sure what we do now, Curly old man. No. We might signal a passing ship, I suppose. Head for Grief Reef, you mean? Oh! Oh no! It's the Roarers! Oh, we're done for! Oh. No, no, we're not! Huh? They're running straight past! Get out of the way! Get out of the way! What's the matter? Where are you going? Anywhere! It's bringing bears off! Ravello's cupboard is on the rampage. Yes, and look where they're chasing them. The maze of witches and the roarers were heading straight for them. What could they do? I don't know. Nothing. The witches lifted grown lads clean off the ground, held them so tightly, they stopped struggling inside the minute. And we could do nothing. The company of Pan had to walk clear across the island to reach the Neverwood again. And when at last they arrived, they found nowhere to sleep. Of course. The Wendy house was destroyed in the storm. A long way to come to find home's not where we left it. Home? Home. The The omnibus omnibus to Putney. Putney. Oh dear. Would they ever see Putney again? I know. My underground den. It's been empty for years, but we might dig our way in. Dig. Dig. Come on, puppy. You can dig too. Wait. I think I can hear something down there. Listen. It's trying to get out. Stand back. I'll deal with it. Slightly. Oh. Hello. And And Curly! Curly. What are you two doing down there? Uh, Not two. There's another one. (laughs) You. How do you do, Mr Smee? Smee. Erstwhile first mate to Hook, bloodthirstiest pirate ever to sail the seven oceans, and taken prisoner by Slightly and Curly. Well, hardly. Oh. Did you not fight him with your bare hands? Certainly not. He made us a nice cup of tea. Ah. Smee had been living in the underground den for years. In fact, he'd made the place very cosy. Thank you very much. Go on then, Curly. The roarers were running away. Yes, but straight into the maze of witches. It was horrible. They didn't stand a chance. And we hid. We wanted to help, but we hid. So did the witches eat them? Witches? They weren't witches. Then why is it called the maze of witches? Who told you that? Ravello. They are sacked nursery maids. Mad with hatred and seeking revenge. Well, he don't know his witches from his watch. That there's the maze of regrets. Nursery maids? Codswallop. Nah, those ladies there are heartbroken. Can't help themselves. They do anything mothers would. Mothers? You mean it wasn't a massacre? It was a reunion? So, if we went back there... <sighs> I don't like this place. It's dangerous. But Slightly and Curly have to go home. They're too big for Neverland. And the maze is their way out. Anyway, why do they want to find their mothers? It's their mothers who lost them. Well, mistakes happen in the best regulated households. Let them go then, if that's what they want. Um, actually, Wendy, we already have a mother. Mrs Darling adopted us. Yes, dear, but before that you did have mothers of your own. Somewhere. I was so young when I got lost. How will Mummy know me? She will, Curly. She just will. Be brave. Well, this is it then. Till London. Till London. Safe journey. Give our love to Nibs. Then Curly and Slightly squared their shoulders and walked down to the maze. George! George! Are you there? Are you all right, Curly, old boy? 
think so. Are you? Mm. Then, through the throng of mothers came a woman, lunging like a horse in deep water, stretching and ducking to catch a glimpse, pushing her way through. Plats that for 30 years had stayed neatly coiled came flying loose. Excuse me. Mummy? Is that you? The others saw Curly helping his mother to refasten her hair, and slightly holding out his hand to a thin woman with long, thin fingers and a thin, artistic face. Marmaduke? Binky! Marmaduke and Binky? Who'd call anyone that? Marmaduke? Yes, Binky? That's us! Mrs. Darling will always be our real mother, Marmaduke. Because she took us in when we were lost boys, Binky. And let us lick the mixing bowl. And shampoo the dog. But here was a new mother, and she'd given them... The the best two names names in the world! Meanwhile, not very far away, Ravello lay so still that you would have thought him dead. What? What do you want? For the first time in twenty years, with his second best coat for a blanket, and with Wendy's kiss on his cheek, Ravello slept. Where are you, James? Where are you? Sleep is a great healer. People don't lie when they say it. So they're all going home? Yes. Good. And you're not. You and John? We can't. We were never lost, remember? Then stay. I don't mind you. You play proper games. Smee! What? What are you doing? Trying to make something of this pram. What for, Mr Smee? A raft, I reckon. There's a lot more lying around at Grief Reef than I could get this lot home. You two could come with me if you like. No. They could. I'd need a crew. Lubbers. Lubbers all. Ravello slept on and his greasy fleece knitted up. The raveled, colourless wool resolved itself into flesh and cloth and hair. Quiet, you skugs, or I'll cast anchor in you! The shining ringlets returned, scars smoothed, but still he slept on. All aboard that's coming aboard! You'd better join them, then. Will you come with us, Peter? All aboard the good ship Dirty Duck, bound for the Serpentine by way of Killingmuir! Like eggs into an egg tray, they all squeeze themselves into the hollow compartments, even Puppy. They all fitted. Oh, do come. When your shadow grows, you can always fly back here. I, I don't go about with grown people. Last call for the Dirty Duck! I've been thinking. Just suppose your mother... No. Suppose she's still hoping to see you again. Maybe she even... No, no. I'm not listening. Hurry up, Wendy! Mr. Smee's casting off! Hurry up! You'll get left behind! I flew home once and the bedroom window was shut and barred. I don't want to know about mothers. For a moment, Wendy didn't think she could leave him. Her little friend, as wild and fragile and beautiful as an autumn leaf blown by the wind. Jane! Go now! Go on! Jump, Wendy! Jump! And Wendy sprang off Grief Reef and landed beside her brother aboard the good ship Dirty Duck. Ram hoods up! That'll catch the wind! Goodbye, Peter! Goodbye. Your mother, Peter! I think she only shut the window to keep out the fog! He put his hands over his ears. But too late. He heard her, like it or not. He watched the raft sail away until the dazzle off the water made it disappear. Then he turned, with a skip and a jump, to set off back to Neverwood. Games to play! When they got home, Coming. they went to see Nibs. Wendy! Nibs, oh Hello, Nibs. We're back. And I drew my children onto my lap 
and prepared to hear all about it. Now, tell us. Tell us everything that happened. Well, 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 and of course they did. Everything. And Tinkerbell and Firefly quarrelled wherever they went. But always hand in hand. And so happy. And Ravello? Captain Hook. I think perhaps all that happened wasn't really his fault. It was Hook's bottle of mischief that leaked out and poisoned Neverland. Was it? Or was it flying debris from the big war? Shrapnel and bullets and such, making holes in the fabric between Neverland and this world. Mm. So dreams leaked out through the holes. Yes, and grown-up mess leaked in. Perhaps. But Neverland did heal again. And Ravello slept on. After twenty days, he woke up. Kesses! But it was James Hook who sat up. Hook who slid his arms into the sleeves of the scarlet frock coat. Yes! It became him well, and he became it. Clothes can do that. And his next waking thought. The remembered nightmare. Oh, revenge will be sweet when we two next meet. How at you, Peter Pan? <laughs> As for Pan, he can fly again now, as far and as high as he chooses. So, maybe that wasn't the creak of the floor in the next room just now, but Peter Pan himself, listening in. <laughs> In exchange for a smile, he may show you Neverland. In Peter Pan in Scarlet by Geraldine McCorcoran, dramatised for radio by Nick Warburton and narrated by Robert Glenister, the part of Peter Pan was played by Daniel Mays, Wendy by Kate Maberly, and Ravello by Roger Allen. Fireflyer was played by Peter Gunn, John Tom George, Tootles as a Man, Joseph Klosker, Tootles as a Girl, Robin Weaver, Curly, Simon Scardifield, and Slightly by Stephen Webb. Twin One, Damian Lynch, Twin Two, Paul Richard Biggin, Starkey and Smee, Sam Dale, Woman, Rachel Atkins, and Tinkerbell by Emerald O'Hanrahan. The music was composed by David Pickvance and it was directed by Celia DeWolf. Peter Pan in Scarlet is published by BBC Audiobooks.